Consumer DNA tests. You've seen the ads. You've probably seen the heartwarming stories about unions and reunions, family trees completed, birth parents discovered, and business is booming to the tune of $22 billion globally by 2024. There are plenty of reasons why people take them. I wanted to find out if I was gonna get Alzheimer's as I have a grandparent uh, that suffers from the illness. Would there be any potential complications for if we did have kids? It was bought by my girlfriend and uh, because it was a Christmas gift, I had to do it. But are consumers ignoring glaring risks in taking these tests? I don't think consumers have any idea what they're giving up when they take these private genetic tests. We know that genetic information and DNA uh, sequencing information is highly sought after by adversaries. What it's really about is do I have a right to privacy or not? And if you give me a big enough database, I'll find you guilty of something. This is Think Again with me, Andrew Stern, where I take you every step of the way as I dig into compelling, complex, and controversial topics that make us wonder, do we need to think again? All right, so to take a step back, I started reporting the story with an eye toward data security and privacy. It seemed like there was a massive security breach in the news all the time. Equifax security breach, which is affecting nearly every adult in the U.S. The biggest data breach in social media history. Massive cyber attack directed against popular hotel chains. And those got me thinking, what would it mean if the information breached was genetic instead? Now, there are a ton of good reasons for taking ancestry and health-related DNA tests which 23andMe will speak to later. But I was interested in two things. One, how much do people really know about the privacy concerns when they agreed to take these tests? And two, what could hackers actually do with genetic data if they got their hands on it? So I first went to suburban New Jersey to talk to Joel Reidenberg, a Fordham University law professor, an expert in information technology, law and policy, uh, especially uh, privacy and cybersecurity. So have you done one of these genetic tests? No, I've not done a genetic test because, because of the privacy concerns. Uh, and in fact, I have counseled many family members not to do them because we just don't know where this data will wind up. Companies are looking to monetize the, their inf the information they've provided. Um, it's very hard today to predict exactly how that's going to happen. Genetic testing websites are not as promiscuous with the sharing of the data as Facebook has been. It's not their business model. However, I think we will see more and more concerns raised and more scandals involving the identification of individuals through these databases. Have you actually seen what the sign up looks like for these things? I've focused on the privacy policies of these organizations and, and the privacy policies are really striking in the sense that the shortest one was 25 pages, uh, one of them was over 40 pages, and they're multiple interrelated documents. They all reference each other and they all incorporate each other. To clarify, he means each individual company has multiple policies, like a terms of service, privacy policy, data security policy, and so on. Each of those link to one another. So a typical consumer will have no way of understanding what's actually going on uh, with their data. Okay, okay. I bet I can guess what you're thinking. Didn't Joel just spell out all the reasons why I shouldn't do this? But don't worry, I don't actually spit in the tube. But I did have to order a kit to see for myself. There's a lot of testing companies out there, many of which offer similar services. I went with 23andMe because they're one of the biggest, they're one of the first in this space, and most of the people I talked to reporting this story had used them. When ordering their kit, it does seem kind of like click wrap. You just check the box and they send it to you. If you want to read about the privacy policy, you kind of have to search it out. But with my kit ordered, I hopped the train to DC to talk to Sandra Joyce, an expert in hacking and cybersecurity who is the Vice President of Global Intelligence at FireEye, which is a cybersecurity company. My first fear with DNA data was that hackers could recreate fingerprints or other biometric identifiers to hack into our phones, bank accounts, and so on. But luckily, Sandra said that's not really true. So what are top cybersecurity companies like FireEye actually worried about? At the end of the day, biometric information is stored digitally, and it's stored in a way that you can both capture and then match to a, a database. Any database is vulnerable for hackers to come into. So much like any information, biometric information, digital information can be susceptible. We know that genetic information and DNA 
uh, sequencing information is highly sought after by adversaries. There are many military applications for having, maintaining, and using DNA data sets. There are new technologies that are coming out that possibly in the future could create designer biological warfare weapons targeting a specific genetic population. Now, while we haven't seen that happen today, we feel that that is a concern that you need to look at in the far future. Um, that's terrifying. I left FireEye feeling both more and less concerned. Less concerned for my Face ID getting hacked, terrified about designer biological weapons. So that's awesome. I got back from DC and my 23andMe kit was waiting for me. So I headed to the studio to unbox the thing. My first thought was that the kit is pretty slick, imminently inviting even, and I can totally see why someone would be inclined to take it. So what I wanted to see is once you actually get a kit, what does it look like from there? Uh, what type of information are they providing to you? And what type of information are they asking from you? So I found that in the box, there really isn't any information about data security or privacy. But when you go online to register your kit, 23andMe did present you with a highlight of their privacy policy and terms of service before you send in your sample. So that's good. At this point, I learned about many of the drawbacks to these tests. But what about the positives? I wasn't able to make it out to Mountain View to interview 23andMe in person. So we set up a remote satellite interview between myself and... Emily Drabant conley I'm a vice president at 23andMe. I'm a scientist by training, uh, and I've been with the company for um, nearly nine years. Different people have different reasons for why they take a genetic test. Some people are really interested in understanding more about their roots, where they came from. They may have questions on the ancestral side, or they want to just be really um, proactive in managing their health. At the end of the day, I think we can all learn something um, powerful from our genetics. What are some of the concerns that a consumer might have regarding the privacy of their genetic data, which I would say is probably a lot more precious than just their browser history. We are unique in that we're overseen by an independent um, third party uh, called an institutional review board that essentially ensures that we meet the highest ethical and legal standards for our research. She made that point a lot at least four times. We are regulated by this independent third party, the Institutional Review Board. We have a third party through the Institutional Review Board. We're overseen by an independent um, third party, independent, independent third, third party. party. So at 23andMe, we're incredibly transparent about the uses of the data, and we believe firmly in putting that control in the hand of the consumer. We've had to demonstrate that our consent document is understandable to a lay audience. It's something that we really value. We want to make sure that people understand what they're opting into to, um, or, or opting out of. While it might be true that 23andMe puts users in control of their data, I find Professor Reidenberg's assessment to be closer to reality. Their consent and privacy documents were pretty hard for me to understand, which makes it tough to know for sure how secure users' data and privacy actually are. So we're a private database. Um, if you do not want your data um, you know, accessed or shared in any way, like that, absolutely, that is totally your choice. If you want to download your data and take it and share it with a physician or with someone else, you're able to do that as well. Um, so we really believe in like putting that decision in the hands of the consumer. That does appear to be true even if their policies are pretty hard to decipher. Users can have their samples and information erased from 23andMe's databases at will. But Drabant Conley said less than 1% of users choose that option. And what about actual data security? We do everything that we possibly can in our power to protect the data, and we've been successful in doing that to date. We've in fact never had a security breach in the history of the company. But that level of data security isn't standard across the industry. While 23andMe is one of the biggest players, there are a host of other testing services who might not be as exacting in their privacy and ethical protections. And what's more, a lot of consumers are taking their personal results from private providers like 23andMe and then uploading that data into other public databases, which opens them up to even more hackers, as well as potential warrantless searches by law enforcement. These are sites like GED Match, which law enforcement can and have searched to tie suspects to crimes. And if anyone in your close family has uploaded their data to these sites, you may be identifiable, even if you don't get tested or upload anything yourself. But for 23andMe, there's also the issue of medical research. More than 80% of 23andMe customers opt into medical research, in which the company can study and share aggregate data with researchers, drug manufacturers, or internal teams to develop new treatments. So consumers are voluntarily paying 23andMe to then monetize their genetic data down the line. Which brought me to my final question. 
Do you think consumers really understand the totality of what they're risking and what they're giving up from a data and data privacy standpoint when they agree to take 23andMe? We believe that genetic information is inherently really powerful. And for those customers who want access to this information, we um, have a platform for providing that in a pretty seamless way uh, where they are in the driver's seat for um, being able to access that data and then deciding if that data is shared with anyone or not. Individuals who use DNA sequencing technology or, or products and services, what they're really doing is you're making a security trade-off. We make security trade-offs all the time. and. My recommendation for individuals who are considering uh, using DNA sampling um, products or services is just make sure that this security trade-off is right for you, that you're getting the information about your medical history, your heritage, or your parentage that makes the risk of that one day being stolen uh, worth it to you. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.